Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we'll be talking about technical analysis. I know a lot of you guys love technical analysis, uh, but that is what we'll be talking about in this video. Uh, and I'll be just breaking it down to you guys in terms of how I view it and how I actually use it. Because uh, for those who do, who, who do not know, I actually use technical analysis as a filter, right? So I don't use technical analysis to find the direction. I only use technical analysis as a filter and I've had a lot of questions from people asking me, Hey, Sanele, uh, what, which time frame should I use or which time frame do you use for the direction? And I always tell them the same thing. I don't use technical analysis for the direction. So there's no specific time frame that I use for direction, but I use it as a filter. And I believe that is why there are so many time frames when it comes to the technical analysis platform, right? Because they are used as a filter, right? A filter to time your, your entry. Because if they used as for if they used for direction and there's so many of them, then that could confuse you, right? And that is the whole purpose why a lot of people are getting confused when it comes to technical analysis, because they're not using it as a filter, as something that filters or that you use to time your entry. But let me not talk too much let me get on the drawing board and let, it and, let and let me explain to you my technical analysis 101 right so first things first obviously we'll be talking about technical analysis right so when it comes to my technical analysis yeah, let's use capital letters uh, so technical analysis right analysis 101 simplified let's be specific that it's simplified right so let's let's change the font and then of course oh, we change the color first and then of course the font right so technical analysis simplified then let's make this rough yeah let's let's do it at 90 yeah 90 is better so technical analysis simplified and then we're gonna just gonna go over a couple of points uh okay before we even we even dive deep into technical analysis uh let's let me do this remember i said that i use technical analysis as a filter right so what do i then use for direction right so then when it comes to my direction i use fundamentals right or fundamental analysis analysis right then that is for direction so fundamental analysis is for my direction right so this is what i use for my direction so let us because we're already on fundamental analysis let us go deep into fundamental analysis right so let us change the font before we continue so when it comes to fundamental analysis firstly uh we use it for we use it for the direction right so used for the direction we use it for the direction then secondly uh, we use it or it's used to eliminate uh, eliminate eliminate used to eliminate uh, analysis paralysis which a lot of people suffer with that i know because i suffered with it when i was starting out uh, paralysis where you're looking at multiple time frames and then you're confused on what the actual direction is that is what uh, analysis paralysis is used to remove the guesswork guesswork on the direction on the direction Right, and then lastly, it is also used. Uh, it is also used uh, to generate trade ideas, right? And if it's the first time you're coming across uh, this this uh, terms of knowledge or in this knowledge of fundamental analysis, when I say fundamental analysis, I'm not talking about a, a an actual. Um, news release right where we go into a, a calendar or a news release calendar and we're just waiting for news to be released and then we trade based on that no that's not what i'm talking about guys when i say fundamental analysis 
yes that is also fundamental analy analysis but that is more sentiment based more short-term based right by fundamental analysis i'm looking at the bigger picture the broader picture what really gives that specific economy value if i'm looking to trade currencies or forex uh, or what what specifically what specifically gives that commodity value right in terms of demand and supply dynamics right if there's increased demand for that commodity whether it's oil or whether it's gold then i'll be looking to buy if there's decreased supply sorry increased supply then i'm looking to sell right because prices will go lower so that is what i'm talking about when i'm referring to fundamentals not just looking at a calendar and taking guess or guessing the direction based on what the news or what the numbers tell you then no that's not what i'm talking about so we used fundamentals to generate trade ideas and for of course to also eliminate analysis uh, analysis paralysis of which most people suffer from it i know because i also suffered from it right so that is the first thing that we need to understand that that is the starting point right now that i've get i've got uh, i've actually gotten this out of the way now we can focus on technical analysis which is the main reason why i did the video that we that we are going to go over today right so when it comes to technical analysis first thing to remember is that it is used like i said it is used as a filter right it is used as a filter to time your entry why do i say to time your entry you are going to time your entry because you know the direction you are going to take based on your entry so that is why we're using it as a filter so a filter it's 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 it, it is something that will give you when to enter right and with at which point should you look to enter that is how we use a technical price chart right we're not using it for direction we're using it for an, for an entry we already know our direction so when we are going to the price chart the only thing that we are looking at the only thing that we are paying most attention to when it comes to the technical chart is buy low and sell high right because remember we're not looking at direction we already know the direction if the if fundamentals are telling us the direction is to the downside we are looking to sell high that is all we're focusing on and, and on, on, on on the actual technical analysis chart and how do we actually identify where we need to sell high at if the trend is to the downside based on fundamentals that is when we use pullbacks right so i'm gonna i'm gonna write this in capital letters so focus is on pullbacks some may some may call it corrections but essentially a pullback is when the market is just reversing not not reversing it is doing it is it is giving a correction so if the trend has been going down if it starts pushing higher that is a correction that is a pullback right so that is where the primary focus is when it comes to um when it comes to technical analysis because we're not looking for direction we're using this as a filter i need the most important thing guys i need you to understand is that technical analysis is the filter it's not for the direction it's a filter so whatever use that we have for it it is to filter and a pullback is also a filter that okay now the market is giving us what an opportunity to sell high if we're looking to sell if it's pulling back and going down in an uptrend now the market is giving us what a pullback or an opportunity to buy low because remember you need to buy something at a cheaper price and sell it at a expensive price right if you if you're a business you want to buy the actual the actual item at a cheaper price and sell it at a higher price so that you can make a profit have the same mindset here right buy low sell high but the most the, the most primary thing to remember is that the focus is on pullbacks if there's anything that you take away from this video is that when it comes to technical analysis focus on the pullbacks that is where your primary focus should be on right and then lastly when it comes to technical analysis uh i'm gonna stress this again even though i've mentioned it we get the trend from fundamentals the sooner and the easier or the sooner and the quicker you can grasp this this concept and allow it to stick that we get the trend from fundamentals but we use technicals as a filter by focusing on pullback so that you can buy low or sell high then the easier 
your trading will be right because you won't be confused when you're going in onto a technical chart you won't be confused on which time frame you should use for the trend or the direction no all of that will be gone all of that will be eliminated at that point right there will be no guesswork right in terms of am i taking the right direction or what is happening at the market right if you go into a 15 minute time frame you're seeing a different trend going to the one hour you're seeing a different trend all of that will be eliminated once you start understanding that the trend comes from fundamental technical and technical analysis is only to focus on pullbacks and then for us so so that we can buy low and sell high that is the primary purpose of technical analysis right so that is what we have there when it comes to technical analysis like i said technical analysis simplified nothing 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 fancy nothing tricky no just technical analysis simplified that's all right so this is what we have there okay let me let me just shift this a bit Okay, then the next thing from technical analysis, we go to pullback. Still within technical analysis, sorry. It is the pullback, right? Because remember, it's two components. We have the fundamental, we have the technical, right? Fundamental, straightforward direction technical. We go into what? We go into the filtering stage of when to time our entries. But then in the technical analysis side, it consists of pullbacks and then it consists of entries once we have the pullbacks, right? So now we're going to go to the next step, which is the actual pullback. All right. So let us pull backs. Uh, like I said, some might call it corrections, whatever you call it, but just know that that is that sh short term move that is against the overall trend. That is what a pullback is. All right. So we're going to focus on pullbacks now and the primary purpose of pullbacks when it comes to trading. So There are a few things to remember when it comes to pullbacks, right? Like I said, we the aim is to buy low and sell high, right? So when it comes to pullbacks, we're gonna use okay, so so during the on weekends, so when you this is when you are performing your technical analysis, you know, you're scanning through your pairs, right? Let's say you know that this is my watch list based on what the fundamentals are telling me this is i'm looking to buy this one i'm looking to sell this one i'm looking to do this and that so then on weekends so on weekends uh, on weekends um look at weekly or monthly monthly time frame uh, pullbacks right or corrections and of course guys we're gonna go into a technical chart so don't stress I'm not just gonna give you theory and then not actually demonstrate and show you what I'm talking about we will, we will, we will definitely do that you know how I do these videos guys I, I, I want I want to explain the reason why I do things in a certain way and make sure that you understand and not just give you surface level information right that you just because what i'm doing is based on principles essentially right so I'm, i need to show you guys that it's not working because i'm using it it can work for you as well if you apply it right because it's based on on, on principles right that's essentially the reason why i need to explain everything in this manner before we get onto the onto the actual chart right so on weekends uh i should have said weekends so on weekends, look at weekly or monthly time frame pullbacks, right? And then, uh, and then during the week, during the trading week, look at, look at daily time frame. For pullbacks uh, for pullbacks right so th those are the those are the most important key things to remember when it comes to pullbacks and then of course once you've identified your pullbacks on the monthly or the weekly time frame during the weekend 
and then as the day progresses you're looking at the daily time frame so every single morning you've already written down or or you've already marked all the currencies or or all let's say currency pairs let's focus on forex or all the currency pairs that you're looking to trade based on the pullback that you have on the weekly if it's the start of a new month obviously you look at the monthly but during if it's not the start of a new month you focus on the weekly then you see that okay this is the pullback that we have on the weekly so you you note that that currency pair down and then during the course of the week so every morning every single morning what are you doing you're looking at the daily time frame that is your primary focus focusing on the daily time frame do we have a pullback on the daily time frame let's say i'll, I'll show you guys on an, on an actual chart these specific examples right if the trend is already going up you don't have a pullback on the weekly it's a buy trend based on fundamentals so you don't have a pullback on the weekly or a bearish close on the weekly then you can during the course of the week you keep on looking at that daily time frame to see if we if we have a pullback on the daily time frame right because you don't want to miss your entries unnecessarily so that is what i mean by during during the trading week you look at the daily time frame for pullbacks right and then another thing we need to remember when it comes to pullbacks once you've identified your pullbacks or you have a pullback then identify 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 supply or demand support uh, support or resistance or resistance retest let me be specific when it comes to support and resistance retest right so you want a break and retest so a flip essentially i'm sure you're familiar with the with those terms guys so essentially it's, if it's, it was a support so it was a resistance then price breaks above it then it retests it at a support and then it continues that is what i'm talking about by support and resistance then supply and demand that should also be straightforward guys when in, in terms of your understanding of supply and demand then if not let me know right let me know if not but it should be straightforward uh you can let me know in the comments below if it's if it if you're not really familiar with supply and demand and most probably i'll do a video on that if but i i assume everyone understands what supply and demand is because remember guys technical and uh, even if it's order blocks right supply and demand or order blocks whatever you call it that that exactly <laughs> that is what i'm referring to so we identify supply or demand, identify support or resistance, uh, retest, specifically support or resistance, retest, broken resistance turn to support, broken support turns to resistance. And then lastly, in capital letters, be patient. So those are these are the rules of pullbacks, right? So this is what we have when it comes to the actual pullbacks. So this is what we have when it comes to the actual pullbacks and then lastly it's the entry right so we now need an entry so when it comes to the entry so now we're talking about entries because we've identified our direction based on fundamentals We've done our technical analysis. We've waited for a pullback because remember on technical analysis, the first focus is on pullbacks so that we can buy low, sell high. We've waited for the pullback. We've identified our pullback either on the monthly time frame or the weekly time frame or the daily time frame during the course of the week. We've identified our supply or demand, our broken support turn to resistance or broken resistance turn to support. Then the last thing now is for us to pull the trigger to execute in the direction that we've gotten from fundamentals, right? So when it comes to entries, let us also change uh, the font size as well as the color so that everything matches, right? So when it comes to entries, also a couple of points that we need to take note of when it comes to entries. Uh, let's change color to white. So when it comes to entries, uh, if if the pullback, okay, let's say pullback, 
pull back weekly pull back from the weekly right so let's say from the weekly from the weekly or monthly or monthly time frame monthly time frame use for our for our and below so essentially what i mean there is that if if you've identified your pullback on the monthly time frame on let's say the weekly time frame and you've also identified your supply or demand based on the weekly time frame or your support or resistance broken support turns to resistance or broken resistance turns to support on the weekly time frame then to look for an entry you use the four hour time frame and below right so essentially essentially you use the four hour time frame or the one hour time frame or the 30 minutes time frame 15 minutes time frame if you have time to keep an and on the charts you can also use a 15 minutes time frame but essentially it's just giving you that reference this is where you start on the four hour if your pullback is based on the weekly and your supply your supply your supply and demand or your support or resistance is based on the weekly that is what i mean by that statement right and then secondly pullback uh pullback from the daily and guys i know it might seem complicated because i'm still giving you the theory of it but once i get onto a price chart it will be easier because we'll just be following this right so pull back from the daily time frame pull back from the daily time frame uh, comma use 30 minutes so we use 30 minutes time frame and below right so in this case if if our pullback is based on the daily so during the course of the week we see let's say it's tuesday uh monday close bearish we're looking to buy we, in, we are in an uptrend monday close bearish then the next day we're looking to buy at a live at a at a daily four hour or one hour support level uh or sorry support yeah support level or demand level because we're looking to buy then in that case when we when the price gets to that supply that demand sorry or that support then we go into a 30 minutes time frame or 15 minutes time frame or 10 minutes time frame or five minutes time frame the lowest right one one minute nah, i'm not really there five minutes time frame the lowest then you can look to execute or look for an entry trigger what i call an entry trigger and your entry trigger in this case is bullish engulfing Let's say bullish engulfing to buy or bearish engulfing bearish engulfing to sell right so that it that those are the entry triggers right so uh to sell then let's use let's put brackets entry triggers right so entry triggers so what do i mean by entry triggers these are the things that you that you're waiting to see when price has given or when the market has given you a pullback so when the market has given you a pullback and you are now at a demand or a support if you are at a demand or a support you're looking for a bullish engulfing to buy because that is the entry trigger once you get that then you know okay now i execute my position if you are looking to sell then you wait for price to get to a supply or a resistance and then you wait for a bearish engulfing to sell that will be the entry trigger you'll know okay i enter after i enter after a bullish engulfing or i enter after a bearish engulfing right and of course depending on which on which uh, on which time frame you had the pullback and you, you found your supply or or demand or support or resistance then it would depend on where you actually look for that bullish engulfing or on which time frame you actually look for that bullish engulfing what do i mean if your pullback is from the daily time frame then you're gonna use the 30 minutes 15 minutes 10 minutes 5 minutes to identify your bullish engulfing or bearish engulfing that's what i mean if your pullback is from the weekly it's, it's based on the weekly time frame or the monthly time frame then you're gonna use the four hour one hour 30 minutes and so forth and that is where you'll be looking for bullish engulfing operation engulfing so that means that if your pullback is based on the daily you do not use the one hour 
or the four hour as your entry trigger that's essentially what i mean there right so this is the whole sequence that i use when it comes to my trading uh for those who love strategies you can call this a strategy yeah you can call this 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 a strategy that this is the strategy that i use of course it's not as elaborated uh, of course it's not as elaborated when it comes to when it comes to uh, the actual fundamentals but I've done a video touching on fundamentals the basics of it remember the Phillips curve and all of that even though it's this video is not in depth when it comes to that but this is essentially my strategy fundamental analysis for direction i move to do my technical analysis go to pullbacks from pullbacks then i wait for entry but the most important thing like i said we need to be patient guys you need to be patient you need to be patient right so now we are going to go into a technical chart the moment that you guys have been waiting for now that we have all of this out of the way but before we do that, let's go on to my spreadsheet here on Excel. It's my fundamental spreadsheet. We're actually going to use this to find the direction, right? So for example, say we're going to do the most obvious or the most traded currency pair. Uh, in this case, it is, uh, okay, my spreadsheet, it's still loading, guys. So let us give it some time to actually load. As you can see it's saying run running background query here at the bottom so it is still loading so still loading it's gonna make the whole it's gonna be a bit slow to load right so okay guys so uh, like I was saying uh, let us go into the fundamental analysis my spreadsheet is now done loading up so we're gonna do the most basic currencies uh, euro as well as the dollar so euro USD right that's the I think yeah that's the most traded uh, economy or currency pay gonna do that essentially when it comes to fundamentals guys don't be don't be overwhelmed by the numbers that you see on my spreadsheet here but essentially it's a comparison when it comes that that's why I say it's it's easier to find the, the direction of a of, of, of a currency pay or a, of an, a currency or economy with fundamentals because it's just a comparison guys you, it's not because the monthly time frame is doing this or the weekly time frame is no it's just a comparison of numbers Right. If you know that a higher number is better or a lower number is better in that specific category, then it makes mm -hmm. things easier. Right. So like I'm going to do it now and show you guys. So Euro, as you can see, this is the non-commercials. We're not going to pay much attention to it, even though they are slightly more bullish on, on, on the Euro than the dollar. This is more like the your large institutions, your hedge funds, sort of. Uh, if we go into interest rates sitting at 4.5 for the euro sitting at 5.5 for the dollar we know higher interest rates are better for investors so that's sort of like a win for the dollar let us go to gdp gdp cup is the strength of the economy or the health of the economy as you can see for the euro it is at zero it, it was at negative 0 0.1 before now it's at zero it had an increase of 0 0.1 percent right then when it comes to for the dollar it dropped from 4.9 to 3.3 it had a decrease of negative 1.6 percent but you can see the difference here 3.3 0 percent stronger for the dollar right then if we come on to services pmi it's essentially they similar in essence to gdp but remember you remember when when we we're breaking down gdp and i explained that on the business side we have business confidence and then we have pmis manufacturing and services this is what i was talking about right so pmis it's purchasing managers index it's generally showing the health of the economy as well on the services sector as well as the manufacturing sector that is the basics of it that you need to know and another thing is that if if it's 50 50 is like the midpoint any if the number is above 50 that means that that economy is growing or expanding if the number is below 50 that means that economy is what contracting right so that is what we have there right so when it comes to the pmis as you can see that we have for the euro we have them at the services pmi at 52.7 from 52.9 then manufacturing pmi at 46.6 increased from 44.4 so manufacturing is in contraction services is still in a, in, a, in in the in the expansionary phase because it's above 50 that's the key thing to remember right and then we have on this side composite 52.6 to 52.5 so that is also in 
the expansionary side. Composite essentially combines both services and manufacturing. Then on the dollar side, from 51.4 to 52.5, also in the expansionary territory, manufacturing from, from a contract point nine to an expansion of 50.7, so that is good, better than the euro. Then when it comes to composite here, 52, 52.5, it's also in the expansionary phase so they both good in that sense right so then we, co we continue moving but the key thing guys is that we're just comparing numbers right we're just comparing numbers if we look at inflation uh, we can see that inflation for for the dollar let us just look at core inflation for the dollar core inflation is at 3.9 for the euro it's at 3.3 .3. uh, sorry about that guys uh, let me highlight it again so three it, Core inflation is at 3.9 for the dollar from 4% for the euro from 3.4 to 3.3. .3. So for the euro, it's inflation is lower, core inflation for the euro. So what does that mean? That means that the Central Bank of Europe or the European Central Bank does not necessarily have much pressure to keep interest rates higher because inflation is lower and it's falling as compared to the Fed, which is the, the United States Central Bank because inflation is what? Is at 3.9 and remember, Inflation is always in reference to what? To the target. As you can see, target is 2% for euro. Target is 2% for the dollar or the United States as well. So it means that they both above target, but who's closer to target? It's 3.3 .3 compared to 3.9. So who, who is more likely to cut interest rates just by looking at this? The euro is more likely to cut interest rates than the Federal Reserve, right? Especially given that we've also seen all the other things by GDP side. So this is what i mean guys you're just comparing you're just doing a comparison of numbers this is how we find the direction 0 0.3 percent inflation month over month for the dollar negative 0 0.4 for the euro so for the euro it's already in the monthly change is already in the negative regions right so that also what puts the central bank closer to actually considering cutting interest rates compared to the fed and then we understand that if interest rates in interest rates are being cut that means that what that current that that economy weakens because what because it's no longer as attractive to investors because it's not paying a higher yield or a higher interest right so that is why we sell an economy where interest rates are going lower and we buy an economy where interest rates are high or they continue going higher right so it creates that essentially it creates that divergence that is why we we, we, we compare because we're trying to find a divergence where one is moving in the other direction right? one is moving up one is moving down we know there's a trend there right and then when it comes to unemployment for the for for the united states 3.7 6.4 we know that low unemployment is better 3.7 in the for the dollar 6.7 for the for the euro and then consumer confidence remember what i when i explained gdp i spoke about on the consumer side we have retail sales we have consumer confidence this is what i was talking about with consumer confidence for the dollar it moved from 69.7 to 79 up 9.3 percent for the euro it moved from negative 15.1 to negative 16.1 down negative one percent you know so just by looking at the numbers you can see that the the dollar or the united states economy is in a better position than the european economy so buy the dollar sell the euro so what what does that mean for euro usd sell euro usd that is essentially what it means just by looking at these singular numbers obviously if we want to go more in depth you can look at the different the, the different trends that we have for the different uh, indicators pmi inflation from last year just to see the trend if it's going growing or slowing and all of that right but just at that face value we do get an idea that of the fact that we are in a what we are in a sell trade for euro usd so when you come onto a technical chart all you are looking for remember what i said we are focusing on pullbacks right focusing on monthly pullbacks focusing on weekly pullback this was all a pullback this is the the weekly time frame right and then during this pullback we are looking at levels of supply looking at levels of because since we're looking to sell means we are focusing on two things supply levels broken support turns to resistance that is all we're looking for right so when it comes to a supply level uh, let me use let me actually use a rectangle so when it comes to my supply level here, this is the one that I have on the euro. So this is my supply level. 
that I have on the euro and my levels my supply levels I only take the wick I don't take from the body to the high no I only take the wick that, that is what I consider as my supply level which is why one of the reasons why my entries are always at the wicks right this is how I just draw them based of five years of only trading with technical analysis before I have been trading with fundamental analysis for two years now yeah just over two years so for five years I was using fundament technical analysis so that eventually I started drawing it like this because that is what seems to be more accurate than how we, we we are normally taught to draw it right but essentially this is what I'm this is what I'm talking about then you wait for price to pull back into your level of what your level of supply in this case and remember what I said if the level is based on the weekly or the four hour if it's based on the weekly on the monthly pull back and also the supply is from the monthly or the weekly then we use the four hour and below for entry and since we're looking to sell I said if you guys want me to go since I said we're looking to sell which means we're looking for a bearish engulfing candle right so let us look for a bearish engulfing so now we drop onto the four hour and then we are now looking for that bearish uh, 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 engulfing candle for us to execute our trade from. So let us uh, zoom out a bit. So when price came into our level, came into our in, into our supply zone, then you wait for the trigger. As you can see here on the four hour, we had a what? We had a bearish engulfing. Then of course, you enter on a pullback, you wait for price to come back to that actual supply as well on the lower time frame and then you look for an and then you look for an entry there whether you place a sell limit or you just keep paying attention to the chart that is what you do but obviously it's easier here because it's already moved and price is already at it gave us an entry on the four hour but as you can see on the one hour there was no entry there's no bearish engulfing on the 30 minutes there's really no bearish engulfing there as well yeah no bearish engulfing as well on the 30 minutes so we're not gonna pay attention to it there is actually a bearish engulfing on the 30 minutes and i know some of you can see it like i can see it so it's this one here but then why do we not consider this because whenever we are looking to trade especially based on the weekly and the monthly we are always trying to catch the high of the week or the low of the weeks if we're looking to sell we are trying to sell high so we are trying to catch the high of the week if we are looking to buy we are looking to buy low so we are trying to catch the low of the week so in this case the week had already started this was Monday so this was Monday this was Tuesday so the high Tuesday had already formed the high of the week so as you can see this this bearish engulfing on 30 minutes is below the high of the week it's not the high of the week so that is why we did not execute on it right you wait until you execute on the high of the week if you're looking to sell you execute on the low of the week if you're looking to buy same thing applies if you're using the daily time frame as your pullback of which i will show you now you're also looking to sell at the high of the day or buy at the low of the day because remember the rules that i gave guys when it comes to technical analysis right or when it comes to pullback i said we buy low and we sell high don't forget those things right buy low sell high that is the primary aim or your primary goal that you're trying to achieve as you are filtering that is why we're using it as a filter right because so that we can know this is high this is low this is where we buy because it's low this is where we sell because it's high right so let us go back to the actual chart so this is where our entry would have been and then of course my stop loss is anywhere between 30 and 60 pips on currencies right so anywhere between 30 and 60 pips minimum is 30 pips then of course maximum is 60 pips that's essentially what i mean right then if we go back to the weekly on euro usd then as you can see from there it kept on falling it only gave us a pullback on this week but essentially it kept on going in the downward direction based on what we are getting from fundamentals as you can see it just kept on falling and falling right so in this case if we were let's say on a weekend looking at, at euro usd we can see okay there's no pull back on the weekly so during the course of the week that is when we now focus on the daily time frame doing the very same thing we are looking for what 
we are looking for pullbacks on the daily time frame right pullbacks on the daily time frame so if you're looking to sell what is a pullback a pullback is a bullish close so if you if your fundamentals are telling you to sell a pullback is a bullish close on the weekly bullish close on the monthly or bullish close on the daily that is what a pullback is right but on the daily side you check every single week so it's it is during the course of the week so what does that mean it means that you can you cannot execute a pullback or a daily time frame pullback trade on monday because it needs to be within the trading week so only after monday so essentially anywhere from tuesday moving forward if monday closes bullish then you can look to execute or look for your entry from tuesday right that is the key thing to always remember right so in that case we are going to go on to the four hour because the four hour separates if you know the very the 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 period separators on the four hour they separate the weeks right so i'm going to use use it here so that we can separate the weeks so that we can know that th these are the actual trading weeks right and if there is a pullback on the daily it was within the trading week or during the trading week right if if there's anything just pause the video go back to the first part that i did take a screenshot of that so that you can keep on referencing to it but i'm just trying to make it easier and explain everything as i go along right so we are now back on the weekly time frame so anyway within the black lines that is during the trading week and all we are doing because we know the direction is down we're not here to look for the direction we're only looking for one thing a bullish close on the daily weekly or monthly that's all we're looking for right so like we have we had so we had a bullish close on this day so this was monday tuesday wednesday close bullish so thursday you would have been looking to on this day on thursday you would have been looking for a selling opportunity you also had okay this was a thursday bullish close this was friday this was a bullish close on thursday sorry on monday tuesday wednesday wednesday but then remember what i said if you are looking to sell based on the daily you want to sell at the high of the new day which should be above the high of the previous day the same applies to the weekly you want to sell at the high of the weekly which should be above the previous week if you want to buy you want to buy at the low of the weekly which should be below the previous week if you want to buy based on the daily pullback then it should be below yesterday's uh it should be below yesterday's daily close or daily low right and you should look to buy the low of today that is essentially what i mean there right so that is why i do not pay attention to this one because the next candle did not push above it i needed to push above right so in this one we had a pullback on this one here yeah, right so this was also on a this was also on a wednesday no thursday yeah this one was also on a thursday right so now remember what our rule said I'm going to have to keep on referencing the rules so that it, so that you guys can follow along because for me I can just keep on going because I've been doing this I know it right but remember what the rule said if the pullback is from the daily time frame we use the 30 minutes and below for our entry so in this case we're not going to use the 4 hour to try and get our entry but we're going to use the 30 minutes right throw from 30 minutes and below that is where we'll try and get our sorry before we get to the 30 minutes and below which is the entry we need to identify our pullback right because remember we said that if during the trading week look at the daily time frame for pullback we've just identified that therefore identify supply or demand support or, re or resistance retest so if the pullback is based on the daily time frame then we use the daily four hour one hour as our as our or our our supply or demand level so in this case since we're looking for to sell we're gonna look for supply on the four hour or on the time frames below the daily time frame that's essentially let me just put it that way so from time frames that are below the daily time frame in this case i have a lot of time frames i also have the 12 hour time frame because remember i said that it's for filtering right so that is my that is the primary purpose it's to filter so if i can have enough is enough filters as much as possible because i'm not there to guess the direction then it makes my trading easier right so we can use the 12 hour we can use the the eight hour like we have here 
so we have you have a supply here we also had it on the on the on the 12 hour but we also have it here on the 8 hour as you can see right so we also have it here on the 8 hour as you can see let us look at this here there's nothing here then we can go into the 6 hour there was nothing there as well in terms of supply 4 hour nothing there 1 hour the last time frame okay let's zoom out a bit we do have one here in the one hour right but all in all guys it comes with practice right it comes with practice just follow the rules and then do your practicing this was the one hour that we had there so essentially this was the previous day that closed bullish as you can see so once we get above that they do say i'm looking for a trigger and we said we look for a trigger from the 30 minutes and below when it comes to this so obviously this is a bearish engulfing but we wouldn't use this as our trigger entry right and obviously here as well this was the daily candle that closed bullish so on this day we close bullish and then obviously above that into our zone then we look to sell right so we're gonna start on the 30 minutes for an entry no bearish engulfing here there is a bearish engulfing here but obviously we for for a 30 minutes time frame to form remember for a 30 minutes time frame to form the five minutes time frame would form first and then the 10 minutes the, the 15 and then the 30 minutes candle right so we can let us start on the five minutes to make this easier so there was no bearish engulfing here right so then we go to the next part so in this one we had a bearish engulfing here so same thing that we did when we when we entered via the weekly same thing so entry entry on a retest of the actual order of the actual supply or order block whatever you call it so and then obviously stop loss is 30 pips so minimum 30 pips stop loss somewhere above there and then same similar thing so in this case then let's go to the 10 minutes to see if we got an entry on this one based on the 10 minutes so we also had a bearish engulfing here based on the 10 minutes As you can see here bullish candle followed by followed by a bearish engulfing candle right and then obviously our entry would be a retest up here so our entry would be on this candle pullback retesting our demand and then sorry our lower time frame supply or our entry trigger supply in this case and then would allow the market to do whatever it does the reason I wanted to use euro usd as an example it is because it included both examples of using the weekly and using the daily and that is essentially why when it looks at when you look at my trades from a higher time frame it appears as if i entered at the wicks as you can see on the daily here this is how it looks on this weekly setup it appears that it entered on the actual wick of the weekly candle you know so this is how it looks so now let us go on to actual positions that i executed i did this so that i could explain to you guys what I'm talking about and then now let us actually go on to US 500 and then I show you guys that this is how I actually executed my trade right so we had let us go into the monthly we had a monthly pullback here right and then obviously with this monthly pullback do this so we had this monthly pullback here right and then obviously if i switch to a line chart because remember i said i'm looking for either a break and retest so if i look for a break and retest i have one here as you can see on the monthly okay let me do this so that it becomes accurate right so break and retest here then we can go into the weekly it was around the same level here as you can see Right, so it's around the same level or you can use this weekly demand 
So technical analysis is pretty straightforward once you know what you're looking for. It's pretty straightforward. Then obviously we said once we've identified that, then you use your four hour. You can use your four hour for entry purposes. In this case, wasn't triggered. Use your one hour. Okay, let me do this to make it quicker. So it wasn't triggered. Then let us use 30 minutes. So no entry trigger there. So let us use 15 minutes. And I'm purposefully doing it this way so that you guys can follow through because I know that I entered on the five minutes, but I just, I just want you guys to see and have an understanding. So here, no entry trigger here, no bullish engulfing, no entry trigger. Then let's go to 10 minutes. So there we have a bullish engulfing here on the actual 15 on the actual 10 minutes time frame bullish engulfing then you wait for a pullback you enter on the actual pullback right on a retest here you enter then obviously you will stop loss when it comes to indices 50 pips minimum stop loss so in this case you know, it would, was way way down there because this is like 29 pips this is like 29 pips so it was way down there the reason i have my entry here at the lows and not here is because i used the one minute time frame like i said not gonna get into the one minute time frame and how i used it to enter but essentially i had used the one the one minute time frame but this is also giving you the same examples of what i've went through of what i've explained that this is how i actually took entry right and then now everyone looking at my trade it appears uh, let us go to the four hour and let us actually go into the three day time frame. So now it appears that, oh, I entered at the wick, but it's just how I broke down from the higher time frame to the lower time frame as a filter, not for direction. And the reason I'm able to execute this type of entries, it's because I'm not confused in the chart by confused. I mean that I'm not in two minds of, okay, I was looking to buy, but how it based on how it's falling now, it seems as if it's a sell position. No, I I know my direction and I'm and I've stuck to my direction. So that is why I'm able to capitalize on these moves when they actually present themselves, right? So and that is why I'm still in the trade. And you know, guys, based on fundamentals, why I'm still holding this position, as you can see, and I'm I haven't yet exited the position. But that is how simple it is. Like I said, technical analysis simplify. That's how simple it is to enter based on technical analysis. If you're using it as a filter so that you can enter, not to look for the direction, because that is why it's easier for me to, or simpler for me to get these entries because I'm not looking for the direction. I'm only looking for pullback, supply, demand, support, resistant entry. That's all. When I'm looking at a price chart, those are the only things I can see, not the direction. Those are the only things I can see. Then we can also look at GBP JPY that I that I also executed. So we can go into the monthly. We go into the monthly. So this was before we had this monthly pullback, but we had we had this monthly supply here. This monthly supply. And for 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 some of you that are asking, how do I identify my monthly supply? It's the same thing, a bearish engulfing. If it's a bearish engulfing, that is a that is that is a supply. If it's a bullish engulfing, that is a demand. Why specifically do I want a bearish engulfing? Because that shows momentum that there was enough selling pressure here. So chances are if prices get back to that level, that we might find some sellers, especially if it goes in line with my fundamental bias or fundamental direction, right? So that is what we have here. So this is a monthly supply because we had this bearish engulfing candle, right? And I am obviously looking to go short on GBP JPY. 
right based on my expectations of the japanese economy and the weakness that i'm seeing in the in the um, the weakness that i'm seeing in the uk economy i won't go to my spreadsheet to try and explain everything but i gave you an idea of how i go through the basic of how i go through everything obviously i'll also focus on the central banks during their meetings what are they saying what are they looking forward to what are they expecting and then i base my 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 decisions or direction or trade idea based on all those factors right so when it comes to the monthly time frame the only difference is that since this is a bigger time frame and if we go into the lower time frames then it would cut the zone would cover a whole almost the whole chart right so i only use half of the actual level so only half of the zone right so anywhere from 50 percent of the zone and above if i'm if it's a supply that is what i'm looking at so this is my monthly supply right then obviously go into the weekly time frame as you can see we had a pullback on the weekly as you can see this was a pullback where's the high of the previous week so this is the high of the previous week so anywhere above this high at a level of supply or at a level of uh, broken uh, support turns to resistance i would look to sell nowhere below this the, the previous week's high am i looking to sell no only once we get above it and once we get to a level of supply or a level of resistance that is when i'll be looking to sell and that is what we had push up here what do the rules say go to the four hour right so we can use the four hour as you can see you see price pushed in here gave us a drop but i did not enter on the four hour i entered i think it was on the one hour based on the one hour no it was based on there because there's no there's no entry here because you can see this is the high of the previous the, the, the high of the previous week so we push above at our level of uh supply this is the one hour there's no entry here then 30 minutes yeah it was based on the 30 minutes as you can see so as you can see we had a bearish engulfing on the 30 minutes place my sell limit and then obviously it got triggered right when price price dropped and then it pulled back triggered my entry or triggered my my sell limit as you can see stop loss here it's 30 pips as you can see pips here 30 pips that was my stop loss and that is my minimum stop loss when it comes to to currencies and that is why that is how i'm able to have such m limited downside and unlimited upside because it's 30 pips stop loss right and then obviously already the trade has moved 233 pips from a 30 pip stop loss what it what risk to reward ratio is that for those who love calculating risk to reward ratio but essentially if i continue holding this position and it goes for 30 pip for for a thousand pips and i've and my stop loss was only 30 pips you guys can do the you can you do you guys can do the maths right and it's only because my direction comes from fundamentals i'm not gonna lie that is the only reason it is because my direction comes from fundamentals and i use technicals as a filter only so this was in this is how i executed this gbp jpy trade right and it's as simple as that guys use fundamentals for your direction use technical analysis for your entry and i've shown you guys everything so like i said this is my strategy essentially uh this is this is what i do when it comes to trading fundamentals for the direction technical analysis for what for the timing of my entry number one number two so that i can buy low and sell high number three to wait for the pullbacks and then to get an entry right wait for a pullback sorry get a support resistance supply or demand then get an entry that is this is essentially my 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 whole strategy in a nutshell this is this is when i'm going into a price chart this is what i'm going in already of course my fundamentals i'm always on top of my game i know what is happening i know the direction so every single weekend i'm looking at the weekly time frames or when i'm doing my technical analysis and i i and identify which currency pairs i'm focusing on based on the pullback that i had on the weekly immediately once i see the weekly pullback i look at the level of supply demand support or resistance on the weekly or the monthly and i'll be using that then i i i, I put i add that that pay onto my watch list during the course of the week from tuesday moving forward because every single day i do my technical analysis 
30 minutes maximum just scan through your scan through all the daily time frames of all the of all the currencies that you have on your watch list or all the the asset classes that you have on your watch list scan the daily do i have a pullback on the daily if you have a pullback on the daily on a specific currency pay then okay today this is the one that i'll be focusing on because i might have an entry on this one and it's as simple as that identify your level of support or demand from the daily time frame going lower daily time frame four hour one hour if you have those other time frames 12 hour eight hour six hour you can also use that it's not going to confuse you because you're not using it for direction it's only going to confuse you if you're trying to find the direction because you look at 12 12 hour time frame it's showing you a different direction four hour time frame showing you a different direction you then you're now confused but if you know that i'm only using it for a filter i know i want to buy no matter what i'm only using this as a filter to find my supply my, my demand level or support level then it simplifies everything then your technical analysis becomes simplified you're no longer guessing the direction you're no longer having analysis paralysis because the because the time frames are clashing in terms of direction no everything just becomes clear crystal clear and then from there you've had your pullback you've identified your levels of support resistance or supply and demand then you wait for an entry bearish engulfing bullish engulfing simple currencies 30 30 pips stop loss minimum 60 pips stop loss maximum indices 50 pips stop loss minimum and then i've never had a 100 pip stop loss but that would be my maximum on indices because remember guys i swing most of the time so i know i'm gonna make more than that i know i'm gonna make more than that right but essentially this is the video that i wanted to bring to you guys for technical analysis 101 so that it can it can give you an understanding of how i view the charts and what i do when i go into a price chart uh might si might sound or seem foreign uh to some of you uh because i only i only looked at the chart just for the filter i didn't look there to find the direction and everything i did not have a lot of writing or a lot of drawing on the t or drawings on the chart but essentially this is how i use it and this is how i approach it and it, yeah it has simplified a lot of things like i said it, i'm no longer confused in terms of what i need to do when i look at a chart because i already know the direction i can get the direction without looking at the chart and i know what i need to do when i get onto the actual price chart right so i just wanted to share this video with you guys so that you have an idea of my full strategy and then obviously the more you practice this the more you apply this most importantly screenshot this part the rules write them down practice 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 i know you love big testing <laughs> practice practice i also love big testing when i was using technical analysis so i know most people do big test this big test this and i and, and and you'll be amazed by the results you'll be amazed by the results guys you'll be amazed by the results because one thing it's going to help you with you won't be going in and out of your positions right you just enter hold and swing your position right you won't be going in and out of positions like i've shown you with the positions that are executed even like i've shown you with this position which is euro usd uh this is this is what th these two positions were both in january of course one was in the beginning of february but both in january this one was in december right but at the end of the day you don't necessarily need to trade every single day but you'd still be making a profit like that s p 500 trade that i show you guys it's still in profit do i necessarily need to trade every day no if the opportunity is there yeah i can but it's not really necessary for things to be that way right so you practice this approach and i believe you and i it will make your trading simple it will simplify everything and of course guys as always if you found value in this video like the video share the video and of course don't forget to subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when i do upload another video right i know it was a long one but it was i feel that it was worth it because uh, i don't want to give you guys half information of or, or, or surface level information like like how i call it i need to give you guys the full reason behind it and break it down for you the theory part of it and then give you guys the application to show you that this is what i also use so i'm not just giving you guys something that i read from a book or maybe i watch someone else's video and then i was like oh let me create a topic on this no this is what i use you've seen the trades that i've executed this is what i use that is why my entries are like this because some people will say that that my entries are crazy sniper entries no it's just because this is how i use 
technical analysis. I know that direction. Technical analysis is just a filter for to enter in that direction. But like I said, guys, don't forget to subscribe and of course share the video and like the video. Cheers.